Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I've done a video. I've been taking a little break here uh, for a number of reasons, but today's video is gonna be a repair video. We're gonna get back into doing some just basic repairs and we're gonna fix this here, Sorensen DLM 300-2. Uh, this is actually gonna be a pretty simple repair, but we're still gonna go over it and take a look at how it's done. Uh, but what this power supply is, is it's a 300 volt, two amp power supply. Um, and it's kind of a specialty supply that you won't see a lot. Uh, I got really lucky on getting this one. Um, I got it all for the price of diving it out of a dumpster. I'm actually really familiar with these power supplies because we use them at work on a lot of our products. So it is something I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, this one is a pretty high voltage unit. So uh, you won't see a lot of people with it. I mean, anything over 50 volts is considered high voltage, according to OSHA. Uh, but, you know, 300 volts DC is dangerous. So uh, this is definitely something to be careful while servicing. And you really don't have to get too deep into this to do this repair. But uh, let's just jump right into it and take a look at what's going on with it. Okay, so let's get a little overview of this before we really jump into the repair. Uh, so we have a power button, a over voltage protection preview, local remote, our voltage and our current uh, preview, and then the output on and off switch. The output is actually on the back of the unit. Same with, we actually have some IO on the back too. We can take a look at here in a second, but let's actually look and see what this unit is doing. So let's first boot it up. They take a little while to turn on and the fans are kind of loud. All right, so now we're on and it's just gonna show all zeros because the output is off, but we can press this preview here and we can see we're set to uh, almost an amp and we show 173 volts set. But let's see what's actually wrong with this unit. If we start to push on the potentiometer at all, it just starts to jump around. So this actually has a bad potentiometer for the voltage control. And so uh, if you have it turned on and it does that, you'll hear it'll make awful sounds when it starts jumping around. Uh, and the pot gets worse when it's actually um, running versus um, just in the preview mode. So definitely we have a bad potentiometer in here and it's probably always what's wrong with this thing. So uh, for the price of a $20 potentiometer, we should be able to get this thing working. Um, but it does in fact output, it's working, but we keep hitting the, we keep making just this kind of jumpy sound if we try to turn it and it hits the overcurrent. And yeah, this is just a, a bad pot. And so I don't want to mess with it too much and break it because it is in fact working and there is an output voltage. I, I have tested that. So other than the bad pot on there where it's just jumping and making a bunch of noise and it just sounds like it's gonna blow up, uh, it, it looks like it's a good unit. So here on the back, we do have some IO. So here's that DC output. Uh, we have a, a parallel IO, we have some setup switches, and then there is an analog interface here too. Uh, and then right net in between the DC output and this parallel IO, there is a remote sense uh, line right here. That's this connector. We won't really get into all of that in this video. You can just check the manual if you really want to know what all the different setup features do and what the two IOs are capable of. Some of the newer units have an ethernet connection on them too, uh, but this is a pretty old one. So for doing this repair, we don't actually have to take the whole, uh, this entire thing apart. We only actually take this front face off. Uh, I will tear the whole unit down here in just a moment, but let's just start with taking the front panel off to see what we need to do for the repair. And so as you can see, there's a pin header here and a pin header here that mate with the uh, power board there. Uh, so this, this whole control panel right here just slides right off. So for replacing this bad potentiometer, uh, that's all we have to do. We don't actually have to tear down the whole unit and break the quality seal and all of that. Um, now 
this part number here is a 3590S-291-5000. L and it's a, a 5k ohm uh, potentiometer um, so both of them are the same so either one of them could go bad on you you could have a problem with your current or your voltage one this one's just the voltage one so uh, that's all I'm going to replace is this voltage potentiometer uh, they're not very expensive but they're also not cheap it's $20 uh, so I'm just going to replace the one bad one and save the good one you might be able to clean the contacts on this but I mean, for 20 bucks, I might as well just replace it, uh, especially with this being about a thousand dollars for a used one of these, you know, treat, treat the thing well and give it, give it the new part. Now let's open up the rest of the way and take a look at the inside before we do this repair. Cause it's going to be a pretty simple repair. Okay, so now we got this unit opened up, and it looks just like an amplifier, right? This looks like car audio uh, with uh, some extra chokes and fuses. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess you know, power conversion is power conversion. Um, so really, if you have one of these go bad on you, uh, places to start. First, we have some fuses. There's uh, two fuses right here, and we have another fuse right there. So those are some common failure points. Um, you also have a uh, MOV here, and um, we have relays throughout. So there's two relays there and two relays there. So those could be other possible failure points on the unit because, you know, mechanical things do like to go. MOVs do just eventually fail. Another common failure on these, because one of the other guys from work has one that they fixed, uh, is that the, the FETs can blow sometimes when, uh, when the unit gets backfed too much or something like that. Uh, there is not a diode to stop you from backfeeding this unit, so you can backfeed power into it and cause problems. I really wish uh, Sorensen would put out a good repair manual or schematic of this thing because we have lots and lots of headers with test points that uh, we could have uh, used to better test this thing. And uh, I mean, like what expansion card possibly, who knows? Uh, I really don't know what all of this thing is because I don't have a schematic to it. Uh, I haven't really ripped it all out. I can tell just by looking at it what, what we have here is your AC input, uh, chokes, you know, just to keep noise from being backfed in there. We got a big rectifier here. So uh, what probably happens in this unit, if I had to guess how it works, since I don't have a schematic and I, I really haven't torn it all the way down to look at everything, we just uh, rectify our mains input. Uh, probably we have a boost controller over here that boosts up the voltage higher than 300 volts. And then we have a buck converter topology over here that's going to buck it down uh, before it goes out. But I really don't know um, exactly how this thing works because I don't have a schematic and I really haven't spent too much time on it. Uh, you can see some shunts here. So this is probably where our current shunt is for the output, if we're not using a current transformer, that there could also be, uh, the, these guys look like, but I can't tell uh, if they are Hall effect sensors. So they, we could be using Hall effects to get the output current on this. But yeah, without either a schematic or spending a lot of time on this, I, I really don't know how this power supply works internally, um, but they do work pretty good. Okay, well enough messing around. Let's go ahead and get this thing fixed up. So um, it takes a really small Allen key that I don't have. I'm not really sure the size, but this uh, T5 Torx fits it nicely. And we'll take out these little Allen keys. We just have to take that off so that way we can get to the nut that holds the potentiometer down. And then we can desolder the potentiometer from the board. and that removes the potentiometer from the circuit. 
It looks like it'd have been easier to actually start at the bottom and work your way up to uh, get it off of there. All right, so here's our brand new one. Take a little isopropyl alcohol, clean that flux off. And that's all there is to getting a new potentiometer on there. So get the knob back on. And then we can button back up this whole thing. Yeah, I'm glad I just went ahead and ordered the new pot instead of trying to clean this one up. Cleaning it definitely would have fixed it, but I broke it as soon as I tried to open it. The plastic uh, has gotten really soft and uh, brittle here. Uh, but man, look at, all, look at how dirty that connection was. That thing was just absolutely filthy. Uh, just... If I could have been more gentle with it, just cleaning up this uh, connection here uh, and any of the other ones that may have been dirty there would have just fixed this thing up nicely. But man, that one was absolutely filthy. Let's put this power supply back together. But first, um, I want to just show how it goes back together, even though, like I said before, you don't have to take this cover off, but we can see better with it apart. We have this connector down here on the end that's got the four. So I like to put the little small connector in and then slide it the rest of the way on there and see now we have both the connectors hooked up and the front panel back on and then top cover goes back on this way the side with two holes goes to the front the side with one hole goes to the rear the big screws came off of the side the three silver screws came off of the bottom and then the rest of the black ones go on all of the visible area and like, like I said earlier, you got that one with the quality seal. So if you take this off, you do break that quality seal on it. If for some reason yours is still under warranty and you wanted to work on it, uh, just slide the front plate off. It's a new day and I have another trick up my sleeve before we wrap up this video and test the thing. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a front panel here. So I 3D printed uh, a little bracket that screws right in and has that 19 millimeter spacing or the 0.75 inch, um, just the typical spacing for a multimeter. That way your dual Pomonas and all of those will plug right in. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to put a connector on the front of this thing so that way you don't have to go to the back all the time for your connection. Okay, so let's uh, just take a look at it working now that we got it all hooked up here in the front. Um, units powered up. We have a load over here that is not on right now. So we'll turn it on. We have 13 volts out, and that's what we're set to. We're set to 13 volts, so 0.75 on our overcurrent protection. So now we can turn on the load. We're asking for half an amp here, and we're seeing about a half amp load here, and we still got about 13 volts out. Um, this thing's limited to 150 volts, so I can't test it all the way throughout its range, but it seems to work pretty good, and this potentiometer does not jump around like that old one was. So we have a nice steady output, we're not making any awful noise, we're not jumping around anymore. So uh, yeah, that definitely fixed our problem, just a bad potentiometer in this unit. Uh, it was really bad though, and it was jumping around causing all sorts of problems. Uh, but now we have it all loaded up and then we got a nice little modification here 
where the connection is in the front of this thing and it's not those spade connectors. We just take a banana connector in there. Um, I do need to put some heat shrink on those uh, connections there just to prevent uh, shorting. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. Okay, well, I will upload this thing to Thingiverse or Thingiverse. I'm not sure how you're supposed to say it. Uh, and I'll link it in the description. So that way anyone that does have one of these Sorensons, if they want to 3D print the little bracket themselves, uh, it is available. And uh, yeah, well, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one.